Hey there, LOTR SVG Gamers. So today's tactic talk is going to be rule changes that I want to see. Uh, really, Dan and Sam uh, want to see too because we kind of all agree. We all play together and have the same uh, kind of thoughts. But Dan won't be with me today. So um, so I got a list of things. Um, so I'm very excited to see these new Middle Earth rules. Um, mainly because we've been playing the Honda rules now, I think, four years. Yeah, 2012 it came out. So it'll be fun to finally have kind of a new, fresh rule set, which is always fun to have, and uh, especially the expansions, the rule set made. So, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to delve into it. So the first point I have is reduction in magic. So I'm not, what I'm saying is I want to see less armies use spellcasters. Um, I think it would add a, a different balance to the game, uh, maybe a balance that I personally like to see just because I... For a long time, I never took magic in my armies. I kind of, I took uh, stronger heroes, kind of not, not like big point heroes, but heroes like uh, Amir, Thedon. So I think a reduction of magic it make games more interesting, a little bit more strategic. Um, seeing less ring race on the table, stuff like that. That's just something I want to see personally. Uh, Dan, I think Sam would too. So uh, same point, nerf of uh, heroic strike. So. I played Rohan. Well, I play Rohan, I should say. And when the strike first came out, to me it was awesome because I can go in there and fight, uh, finally be able to match Aragorn's fight so him not being able to automatically get the six and win. Uh, so with Rohan, that was a big deal because no one in that army has over fight five. So uh, that to me, that is good as a Rohan player. But then when I started playing my elves... And I started taking more expensive heroes like uh, Glorfindel. I started taking um, Thranduil, guys like these. So then when I started taking these bigger heroes, and in the book and in more, they're, they're really strong. Glorfindel, you know, is, is a really good guy in, in the lore. So then when I go in there and Syrian charges me and outfights me, uh, he uses his mind. I roll like a, I counter his strike. He, count, he, he calls the strike and then I counter it. I roll one to fight eight. He rolls a six and get fight ten and then wins and can kill my horse, that kind of stuff. I want to see, so when I say reduction, I want to see the D6 become a D3. I want to see them do the strike from D6 to D3. I think that would be a good balance. Uh, not get rid of it altogether, but nerf it a little bit. So then the second point, or third point, I should say, is uh, nerf and hurl. So, again, before the Hobbit rules even came out, monsters were pretty useless because you can base them and tie them up with your basic troop, yeah, they can kill him. Most monsters don't have might, so they couldn't do heroic combats or anything like that. Um, so, Hurl is something I want to see get nerfed. Again, I want to see the D6 get nerfed down to D3. Uh, because when you start versing Ring Wraith armies, like three Ring Wraiths and Shelob, that kind of stuff, uh, and your army gets knocked down, I, I'm, I got my Bayorn list, for instance. So, in a way, both, both of these I'm kind of... Um, uh, you can tell I'm, I'm kind of biased towards it. At the same time, I want, these are the actual changes because my Bayorn army I have with Radagast Alliance. It has uh, three Eagles, Radagast, and Bayorn, I think. Um, banks on Hurls. So using someone's numbers against them. But at the same time, I, I agree. When you start versing someone and you knock down their army, you win a combat, you're higher fight. The monsters always have the higher fights than the, the troops. Uh, unless they're transfixed, which again, the reduction of magic would changes you start hurling a guy's army one turn i think i killed um like five uh wood elf warriors which is a lot and uh i think d3 because i mean the difference in strength is normally three or four anyway so even if you roll a one you get five or six inches d3 yeah so let's say you roll a six you get that three you get like nine inches potentially nine or ten inches so it's still get a lot but i think a reduction in that would be pretty good. Uh, kind of a nerf of hurl. Okay, so then the fourth point is nerf of magic. So okay. So listen they don't they don't want to make it to where casters need higher numbers, that kind of things. Uh maybe more more will for resisting, but nerf of magic in general. So again, before I actually started playing so we went to Man the Mountains back in 2010, 12, and before then our group of guys we played with not rarely use magic. Not only Anna's actually use magic. Uh, 
So going into uh, Man in the Mountains and playing the games and learning, seeing your heroes get transfixed, that kind of thing, okay, yeah, we were willing to, to, to have that. So then in the new rule set, the Hobbit rule set, because this was back before the, um, this was back before the Hobbit rules came out, so Heroic Channels came out. So here's, here's the one point I will say. I do think having the channel transfix, having the channel command, having the channel some of these other powers was the right step. Those I would not change. But when I say nerfing magic, Fury is one of them. Now, Fury is one of the big ones I'm talking about when I say nerf because when you fight Urukai, you're playing Gondor. You already have the disadvantage. You already need sixes to wound, they need fives. So then having Fury, okay, well, oh, let me say that. Oh, okay, I say Fury. So, so to me, I, I almost want to say you get rid of Fury as a whole, and I know that's not very popular. That won't be a very popular opinion, just because the game is not really... The way it's balanced now is weird, because before you had no Horde good armies. Well, like, Horde main armies. You had a lot of Horde evil armies, so the Horde would lose more guys, but then, you know, they would lose more guys, that's why Fury, um, what I'm trying to say is, uh, like, for instance, Lake Town, though, is a horde good army, so why shouldn't they have Fury, and why should, like, someone like Goblins or Urukai have Fury, because the heroes in Lake Town are no, you know, not, not as good as some of the heroes for, um, Isengard, like, for instance, stat-wise, they match up to me, so, uh, it'd be a little bit more balanced if they got rid of it or they gave good the ability to have um, some sort of fury save. Uh, or make it a 6-up. I think that'd be fine because Channel Fury, I had a game where we, I saved like 17 or 18 fury saves. And I felt bad because it was actually a game where I was teaching Sam when we first got him into it. We were teaching him how to play and I saved like 17 fury saves. Uh, which in a way is my fault because I took a shaman. But I wanted to show him how magic did work, so... A nerf and fury, um, what else? Uh, there's really no other magic powers I have a problem with. Um, I think most of them, I mean, like, again, with the Hobbit rules, they did balance out a lot of them. Uh, maybe if they don't change it, then maybe give, like, heroes, more heroes magic resistance, give some more, more models magic resistance, something like that, something to help balance that out. I mean, that's my opinion. I've never been a huge magic user. I started using Saruman and Gandalf. Uh, that's really the extent of it. I have taken um, Witch King on a Fell Beast, uh, that kind of thing. But, you know, that's just my opinion. As someone, I don't really use magic, so maybe I'm not as diehard into it as, you know, some people are. But that's kind of a change I want to see, the reduction and a nerf in magic. If they don't reduce it, then nerf it a little bit. Um, okay, so then, balance war gear. So what I mean by this, and again, I fall victim to this, or fall kind of in, in with this, is so models, one model can carry a banner, a shield, a bow. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, it's a really expensive model, so you got the uh, High Elf Warrior. Uh, you upgrade him with a banner, I think he's 9 points base, you give him a shield, so he becomes 35 points, and then you give him a bow, 36, I think, something like that. So, balance that out, a model can't take Especially like Urukai with pikes and ba and b uh, crossbows, I'd like to say you can't take a pike, you can't take a spear and a bow, uh, for a certain guy. Like a little crossbow in particular, because a bow and a spear is okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like rangers, uh, elves like that. But then taking a pike, which is really a two handed weapon, having a banner as well is like a two handed weapon. I don't think you should be able to have a banner, a bow, and that kind of thing. So I think they need to kind of fine tune that. Um, when I say balanced warrior, I don't mean like a warrior can't take a bow, and a ranger can't take a bow and a spear. I mean more like a guy can't have a banner, a shield, a bow, and this, and then benefit off of off of it until you get in combat, that kind of thing. I think they need to fine-tune that a little bit. That's just my opinion. Um, where I like having versatile units like Rivendell Knights, uh, Rohan Riders, that kind of thing. I do think uh, there's kind of a kind of a fine line. Okay, so then, the really the uh, another point I want to have is a reduction nerf in Fearless. And what I mean by that is not necessarily Fearless, the rule by itself, but, so back before Hobbit came out, 
the only rules that had the kind of no courage test was Fury and was uh, Bodyguard. And to me now, so if I have an army that I think I'm causing terror, so if I'm playing my Red Agast Alliance army, if I'm playing a, a Spectre army, something like that, the uh, Army of the Dead, that kind of thing, you got terror, you got a lower model count, so you kind of bank on someone not making their courage test and swarming. Um, so there's so many rules now. There's Swarm Protector, I think that's one, Bodyguard, Fearless, uh, Fury, there's, there's like four, four or five rules now, I think, which kind of negate having to make courage tests which all the in a way i'm fine with because again I, for a long time i've never been the guy that um, banked on that but when i played an army that kind of banked on that which was my right i guess lines i saw where some people would say well you know maybe getting rid of fearless or getting rid of swarm protector and keeping bodyguard keeping uh fury that kind of thing i do think to me, it's a little too much, having that many kind of fearless rules, negating that and this. So, that's kind of the, those are the rules themselves I want to see changed, and kind of magic and, and weapons. So, another thing I want to see maybe change is, so before Warbands got added, which I do think Warbands balanced the game out really well. A lot of people, I think, were mad about it, but you can take Balrog and like 60 goblins, which I don't think many people actually did that. Because, you know, you want might in your army, but um, maybe a buff, a boost in a warband, so maybe 15 models. I kind of want to say that because I've had some some weird, uh, like, okay, well, I have two full warbands and a hero, uh, and I'm this many points under. But then if I add in these many guys, I can't have to take this hero. So I think if they maybe buffed the um, number, you can have a warband like 15, maybe. I think that'd be nice. Or maybe having special heroes. Like, okay, so we were actually having a pretty pretty good time the other day talking. So each faction really has a king uh, kind of character. So Elves, uh, Mirkwood, Thranduil, uh, Elisar for Gondor, Theoden, maybe Ian Mir for Rohan, uh, Gilgalad for High Elves. They kind of have this king kind of character. So maybe the king can have 15 instead of uh, 12, so you have like a certain character that allows you to carry more models. Uh, and then in that regard also, maybe having certain characters give the certain warbandies in buffs, which I think would be kind of cool. Um, so the army rules, I do think is really good. Uh, I like that. Uh, I wouldn't change that one bit. Well, maybe, um, yeah, I don't know, I wouldn't change them. Uh, so yeah, that's really the points I want to talk about in this video, because for a long time, I played Rohan. That was the only army I played. I started Elves, I wanted to get a little more competitive, I started taking Magic, um, started playing Monsters, so yeah, these are kind of things, and you know, I have experience with all of them in terms of playing with it, so I, these, it's just, when I play uh, a game at Nova, for instance, the whole game I was winning. Uh, dominating um, my opponent was like the first game and he got a good one good hurl off killed my second most expensive model in my army uh, took Thranduil out I mean it, it did a lot of damage and like I realized monsters in Lord of the Ring rules are not very good I mean uh, compared to what they are now but I, I do think it needs to be nerfed a little bit uh, maybe you would take instead of taking strength 3 hits you take strength 2 hits uh, that makes sense to me. Stuff like that. I mean, small stuff, uh, kind of would maybe balance that a little while. I don't know. Hurl and, uh, Sorcerer's Blast is really, another really hard one, because I actually use it a lot, because, um, I took Saruman, uh, and Gandalf. Uh, actually, the first time I actually started taking a caster was when I played Isengard, with Saruman. And, uh, yeah, no, so, the... Sorcerer's Blast is another rule where I might want to look at that. It's just, I don't, I don't want to say it's too good because you do have to cast it on high numbers with Gandalf, but Saruman, it's, it's pretty hard to verse when you, when you start having like, your models getting knocked to the ground. And that's actually another rule I want to say, and I'm biased, is I want to see a model be able to remount his horse again. So uh, before in the uh, Lord of the Ring rules, you could remount your horse 
and then the rule, new rules, they kind of got rid of that. So it t- it's pretty easy to dismount a hero. Uh, what even you don't even have to kill its horse. You have to knock him, sorcerer's blast, uh, hurl, uh, that kind of thing. So I'd like to see maybe heroes or someone being able to remount. Because uh, this is a ten point mob. It's a ten point upgrade. So losing that ten points in the first turn really hurts. Because that's happening to me a lot. Uh, especially like Legolas who can do his insta shot into the horse. So. I don't know, I'm going off on a tangent now, but yeah, so these are the points I'm going to cover. Uh, and I'm really excited for the rules. Uh, if Even if these changes aren't in it, these are just kind of little things that I want to see, uh, perhaps. Um, so if you guys uh, want to post in the comments below uh, changes you want to see, maybe the balances you want to see, uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to see it. So please like, subscribe, and comment below. And happy wargaming.